When is the best time to sell an animal so we can maximize yield and maximize profit? Well, in this video, we'll be looking at the best time to sell an animal based on our growth curve of an animal. And for this, we'll be looking at uh, the prenatal growth of an animal uh, and postnatal growth. Make sure to stick around to the end where we uh, talk about uh, the proportion of um, muscle, fat, and bone in our animal and how we can use that to predict uh, the best time to sell an animal uh, depending on our uh, market and uh, food available. My name is Teal Simmons and this is Agriculture Explained. To start off with, it's important to understand prenatal uh, growth. So what this is, is just the growth of uh, the embryo and, and um, fetus before it is uh, born. So as you can see here, we've got a growth graph with weight um, by time. After fertilization, there's, a, uh, there's not much going on. It's quite slow in its growth until probably the last uh, month or so when we get pretty much all or most of the growth of the animal. And then we get our maximum growth, we get heaps of growth in this last little bit. And then that leads uh, into birth. And then we'll see the growth um, after birth in the next little bit. It's important to understand and maximize prenatal growth as a larger offspring will most often result in a larger uh, mature animal. The factors contributing to uh, the size of um, offspring are uh, just here. The first factor is the number of offspring. Now it tends to be that an increase in the number of offspring results in a decrease in uh, birth weight. Now if you think about it, if the mother has 100% uh, nutrients but spread across two, um, I guess, offspring, that's going to be divided. So the amount of nutrients um, divided amongst the offspring is going to be reduced. Next, we have uh, the size of the female or mother. So a, a bigger um, mother is going to result in a bigger uh, offspring. Now this mostly plays into the role of, I guess, genetics. Next, we have age. So the younger a uh, animal is, the lighter her um, offspring are. So it, it tends to be that a, a, a first time mother will have a smaller um, offspring, whereas um, a third, fourth time mother is most likely to have larger offspring. Next we have uh, the sex of the litter members. Now if the um, if it's a single birth and it's a male, the male tends to be bigger uh, than the female, but in multiple births, uh, males and females tend to be similar sizes. Next we have uh, nutrition. Now nutrition uh, allows for um, the offspring to grow in the prenatal growth. So pretty much applying all the nutritional requirements to the mother will allow for um, the offspring to grow. And lastly, we have our breeds and genetics. Now genetics make up um, our, I guess, uh, upper limit, our uh, capacity for the offspring to grow. So um, a breed that is, I guess, larger will throw a larger um, offspring, whereas smaller breeds will have smaller offspring. Now it's important, I guess, um, to understand how the genetics and the nutrients will affect offspring. So an example of that is nutrients can increase the number of eggs released, which uh, influence the number of offspring. And then if that increases, sometimes the um, live weight can decrease. Another example is that in late uh, pregnancy, if the um, offspring is too large, there can be birthing difficulties. But if the weight is too light, uh, the chance of survival then decreases. And so with, with our breeds and nutrition, we, we don't want um, too large of offspring, definitely with um, uh, smaller females or first time uh, mothers because it can cause birthing difficulties and you can lose um, your livestock. We've had a number of uh, sheep die because the lamb was too big. Um, and they had birthing difficulties. So it's, it's very important to um, firstly monitor your animals, but also to uh, understand how your nutrients and your breeds can play into that. The growth curve is just the weight of an animal at a particular uh, time of its life. So um, say so at this point, the animal will be uh, this weight. What this will show us is the weight at a particular time in its development. The graph starts at zero, which is marked by fertilization of the animal. So the embryo will uh, start to grow from here. Uh, now this period between fertilization and birth is called the prenatal uh, stage. And so this stage is uh, fairly high growth. 
and once the animal is born it moves into the stage between birth and puberty so as you can see here the graph is quite rapidly increasing so we're, the animal is putting on a fair bit of weight um, in a short amount of time it hits puberty now this is uh, the inflection point so if you want to get uh, technical that's the point where um, the growth rate is at a maximum and then from here it starts to decrease in its uh, rate of growth and then plateaus so this graph is called um, a logarithmic graph or uh, in more simple terms is called a s shaped graph and that's because it pretty much forms an s the graph below this is called our growth rate graph now what this shows is the rate of the change in our weight over time so it's uh, weight per unit of time per unit of time and what this shows is the rate at which the animal is growing so this shows what the uh, weight is at a particular time this shows the amount of weight that it's gaining at a particular time. So this is a graph that we can actually use to determine when's the best time to sell. So as you can see here, our, uh, the rate of growth um, is pretty much builds up uh, at, until puberty where we get our maximum amount of growth and then it plateaus from there. If we're looking to maximize our turnover or produce the most amount of uh, kilos per hectare we have what we need to do is be selling at our um, at the puberty stage or a little bit past it so we can capture this maximum amount of growth say at the very top of um, the growth rate curve we have um, a gain of one kilo per day and then a bit before it we have uh, 0.5 kilos per day now if we had a, a market price per kilo of around six it means that per day of um, ahead of say livestock say cattle it's going to be gaining six dollars per day now if a couple of months before that it's only getting 0.5 kilos per day that would be about three dollars per day so if we want to maximize the profitability of um, our business by maximizing uh, the amount of growth of animal per day we need to be um, maximizing the amount of time uh, we have animals in this section so essentially we need to be buying uh, around here and then selling around here to really capture that uh, maximum increase in growth there's a couple of factors that will affect the rate of growth of an animal um, the first one is the size at birth so the bigger the animal is at birth the larger it will grow and the larger it will be at maturity next we have the sex of the animal so males uh, tend to grow larger uh, than females and then castrated males are uh, in the middle between that now that's because of testosterone uh, hormones which act as a uh, growth promoter. next we have the genes and breed of our animals so this sets uh, almost the upper limit or the capacity that the animal can grow and uh, live up to so an example of how this will affect our animals is if you compare um, dairy cattle to um, beef cattle so obviously uh, dairy cattle aren't made to produce a lot of meat but they are made to produce a lot of milk so you find that uh, dairy cattle is a bit more um, I guess lanky they have really tall legs and uh, not much uh, I guess uh, meat production whereas beef cattle they're a bit more stocky and they have a lot more um, meat production so your genes and your breed are going to play a massive role in the ability for your animal to uh, I guess grow so next is our environment now the environment allows animals to live up to their uh, genes and breed so some environmental factors uh, include the nutrients that the animal receives it also includes disease so disease and stress can set back animals in their growth and then finally um, like climate and heat which can also induce stress on an animal so the more stress you have on an animal the less it will grow because it's trying to overcome these stressful conditions um, and we really need to fulfill our uh, nutritional requirements of our animals to allow them to uh, maximize um, their potential to grow and develop so by knowing this we know the best way uh, i guess to run our farms is to maximize the amount of kilos we're producing per day by keeping animals in this um, puberty area which is uh, we're going to maximize our growth here so we want to prob probably be selling around about just a bit past uh, puberty so we can capture that high growth rate um, but not reduce our efficiency as it plateaus now of course this is a bit different if you have um, some stock for breeding because uh, 
you need to get your cows from somewhere. So there's also another strategy where you don't need uh, breeding stock. And this is where you buy in uh, your livestock uh, at a weaned stage. So this is a bit after birth and before puberty. And then you, so you buy in there, you let them grow out, um, maximizing your uh, kilo growth per day. And then you sell them a bit before maturity. Um, and so you pretty much capture all of that uh, high amount of growth, which means a high amount of kilos per day. Um, and then that as a result will increase the revenue you can make per day. Another really important thing to consider uh, in our animals is the proportion of fat, muscle and bones uh, in them and how these proportions will change over time. Firstly, the proportion of bone uh, will increase first. So from birth, uh, the proportion of bone relative to uh, the rest of the body will increase. Um, now this is to give structural support for uh, the offspring. After this, muscle is grown. Now this maxes at uh, puberty, so as we can see here, increases up to puberty, overtaking the proportion of bone. And then finally, fat uh, will grow once uh, the maximum amount of muscle is produced. So after puberty, more into maturity, the uh, fat proportion in our animals will increase. So there we have it again um, with our maximum growth. The maximum amount of uh, muscle we have or meat um, proportionate to the other parts of the body is maximized um, during or a little bit after puberty. It's also really important to consider uh, the market that we're selling for. Some markets prefer a slightly fatter uh, carcass, which means we might have to in, uh, increase their growth into maturity to increase our fat scores. An example of this is the Australian market. The Australian market uh, desires a bit more of a leaner carcass. So um, selling it at the uh, purity phase uh, will maximize our uh, pretty much muscle proportion while keeping a fairly lean carcass. Now this is probably the best time to sell it, uh, mainly because, well, as we saw before, we're going to maximize our growth curve, so increase uh, the amount of kilos per day. And then we'll also, we won't be putting extra feed in to increase our fat. So all of the feed will pretty much be going towards muscle production, uh, which will be increasing the most uh, during puberty. So finally, it's important to know that there's four different types of fats, and all of these will grow in a particular order. So firstly, there is abdominal fats and fats around the kidneys uh, and the organs. This is designed for uh, the organs to be protected. After this, fat forms on uh, the outside of the carcass under the skin. This, uh, I guess, protects the body and uh, keeps it a bit more warmer, stores um, energy. Next, there's intermuscular fat. This forms uh, between uh, uh, groups of muscles in between muscles and then lastly is what we have uh, what we call marbling marbling is probably what uh, we desire the most out of our fat and that is in between uh, the muscle fibers so for our animals uh, the marbling and intramuscular fat is going to develop after uh, all the other fats so we need to ensure if we want a really marbled um, I guess piece of meat we've got to make sure it's growing probably a bit more into uh, maturity. So there we have it. That is the growth and development of our animals. We now know what the best time to sell our animals are, and that is pretty much a little bit after puberty because we get that maximum growth, the maximum amount of uh, muscle proportionate to the rest of the body. This will allow us to use our feed um, most conservatively and maximize the efficiency of the food we give. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out some of our other videos on animal production. Uh, we even have some on plant production and regenerative agriculture. So check all that out. Make sure to subscribe so you can uh, keep up with um, our content. We're also on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, so check us out there. If you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comments. My name is Till Simmons, and this is Agriculture Explained.